Hi everyone and welcome to Real Talk with Ramallah D and Ahmed Nani. I'm so glad to finally launch this podcast which has been sabotaged so many times I cannot count but um, this podcast and you you might you might know why when you listen to what this podcast is going to be about it is it the, the whole of this part this whole of this series that we are planning is going to be literally candid conversations on issues of covert crime that um, all of us are facing today in the United States and really all over the world and today's show we have two very special guests we have um, Karen Stewart and Midge Mattis here uh, but before I do that, let me introduce Ahmed Anani a little bit. Ahmed is a media and IT professional from LA with a background in theater and film and uh, radio. And we're uh, really privileged to have him here with us um, on this series. And um, Karen, and um, Karen, as you know, is um, our resident Snowden. She's uh, an <laughs> NSA whistleblower with um, spectacular disclosure on the use of electromagnetic weapons on civilians throughout the country. She is the only whistleblower from the NSA that we know of who has consistently spoken out um, about these weapons that are being used on Americans and are also being used all over the world on civilians mm -hmm. um, under, the, under the cover of surveillance. And there's, you know, a great deal of other disclosure that Karen has brought to the fore, and we are very grateful for her presence and for her speaking out. Um, and today she's going to help us decipher a little bit of um, what she has understood and seen about 9-11 from the inside, because she worked at the NSA during the time of 9-11. Um, in conjunction with, uh, I guess, the main focus of tonight's show, which is the financial underpinnings and the corruption and the fraud behind some of this electronic surveillance and uber surveillance that is ongoing in the United States. And Midge Mattis is here tonight to tell us more about that. Midge has a background in real estate development, in real estate investment, and um, also as a realtor, and also with a background in the medical field. And I guess at this point, I'll throw it open to, um, to Ahmed to, to talk with Midge a little bit about her background and, and her, the understanding that she brings to the subject. Ahmed? Is there a bit of a delay? Yeah. There appears to be a bit of a delay in transmission. So, um, yeah. Ahmed, can you hear me? I don't know if he can hear me. Can you hear me, Ahmed? Did you want to talk with Midge? You want me to go ahead? Yeah, okay. Hey, man. It's really breaking out. I can't understand. Well, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and talk. And hello to me as well. Hi, thank you. Hear me? Thanks. Um, I'll just give a little bit about my background in real estate. It's very um, broken up. I can't really. Um, wow. Yeah, maybe you should launch into your background. And okay. Well, yeah, a little bit changes. about my background. I was a realtor um, for, for a while, for a century 21, when I was much younger. And then um, when I married my husband, I became a land investor in Tucson, Arizona. Um, he was a big land developer and so he taught me a lot and um, I also would look on the assessor's website for back taxes and uh, we had a real estate attorney friend who would petition the owners if they were like five years in arrears on their taxes or more, then you could petition the owner to, if you didn't get a response, then you could buy the property for the back taxes, which a lot of times we were, were a really good deal, but it took a lot of, um, you know, looking and searching on the assessor's website and the city website. So uh, I taught myself how to do that. And I also designed million dollar homes and built million dollar homes with my ex-husband and his business partners and um, on all levels. And so I really liked it. And I did that for many, many years, about 11 years, actually. 
So, and I had my own investment company, Midge Investments, LLC. Mm -hmm. So, um, going through my divorce, I had all my property stolen from me. And then two years after the divorce, I realized that something was very wrong. Um, my $1.5 million home that I had designed and had money invested in it, I was told it was a short sell. And then come to find out it was not a short sell at all. So, you know, that involved the title company, that involved the bank, the mortgage company, and the realtor, along with my ex-husband. So we're talking about a huge, massive amount of corruption going on. And so then from there, I discovered um, my other home that I was building was um, stolen from me illegally and that my name was taken off the title illegally. And I found a legal document with where my name was forged. And so then I discovered after that that um, millions of dollars worth of properties and businesses were never disclosed to me in our marriage. I mean, I would find houses and different things. and so. Uh, from there, you know, I just kind of kept following them uh, because my ex-husband defaulted on our divorce decree and he since has never finished paying me what he owes me. And so I've taken him back to court many times and have never been successful. So um, anyhow, so that's kind of my background in that. Mm -hmm. So you've really had a lot of background working with real estate databases and you kind of understand the whole scene, right? With right. Regarding real estate right. investment. Exactly. And, you know, the assessor's website tells you a lot. It, you know, tells you who the taxpayer is on a piece of property. I mean, it can have a name on there, but you have to find who's paying the taxes. And so, um, you know, once I realized that all my properties had been stolen, I pretty much was able to put together a huge portfolio, a huge box worth of properties that were never disclosed to me. And then all the corruption dealing with my properties. And I had a civil suit. I brought a civil suit against my ex-husband and his um, attorney business partner. And so, but that's when I got targeted uh, is when they discovered that I, I had been able to pull all that together and in a concise, uh, well-organized manner and that I knew what I was talking about. So that's when they came after me. Mm -hmm. So Alma, did you want to try again? I, his video appears to be frozen. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Could you repeat that, Ahmed? Because I think we lost that in audio. Something was messed up with the audio just now, so we can quite hear. Oh. Okay. Well, you know, this is evidence right here of incredible oh, yeah. sabotage. Don't Absolutely. you think? I mean, Absolutely. We, we're broadcasting live, you know, and this no, you're not getting through, actually, unfortunately. The audio is severely interrupted. Yeah, this is clearly. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're clearly being hacked. Yeah, you're clearly being sabotaged. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Fine. Yeah. Thank you. I, I kind of heard a little bit of um, stuff in there. So basically, you're saying go Robert ahead. Project. Yeah. If, and if you have any questions, Ahmed, perhaps what you can do is you can, um, you know, write it down in the chat room on the side. If you look on the side, if you click, actually, if you go to the left of your screen, there's a little chat bubble, and if you click on it, you'll see a group chat on the right hand side. Yeah. 
So if you have a specific question, just sort of write it down there. I mean, try to say it. If it and if it doesn't work, if your audio is not working, I'll be happy to translate but at any point. OK? Um, so yeah, so let's, um, I'm so sorry, but you know, in a sense, this kind of. Is it chopped? Chop? On the right. Yeah, on the top, if you go to the top, to the left, you'll see a little blue square with some lines in it, and you click on it, and you'll see the group chat on the right. Ah, okay, so he's written to me, he says, I think there's a several second delay. Right. Yes. Yeah, there is, um, from your end. Um, mm -hmm. It's very odd because, um, can you guys hear me okay? Does it appear to, does it appear to, does, does there appear to be a delay when I'm talking? No, you're fine. For me, you're fine. Okay. So it's mainly Ahmed's? Right, and Karen's fine. Karen's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so he's asking, can you hear anything clearly when I speak? And the answer is... Not really, right? Because pretty much everything he says is being hacked. It's being disjuncted and fractured and so that's, forth. That's how my computer was earlier. I tried everywhere, every room, on the stairs to get it to stop. I finally had to put the computer on a metal tray, and that seemed to stop it. Yeah, this is very bad. Um, but, you know, I wanted to make a point over here. In mm -hmm. a sense, all four of us are wrongful targets of Uber electronic surveillance. Right. And yeah. we are speaking literally from inside Auschwitz, inside, you know, this mobile electronic concentration camp that we are sitting inside, where we are be being subjected not merely to satellite and electronic surveillance 24-7, mm -hmm. we are being subjected to radiation assault with electromagnetic weapons and with neurotech, neurotechnology. And we're here pretty much to tell the world this is what's going on. I mean, I'm literally sitting in my room, as you can tell, I'm in front of my bookcase. I really mm -hmm. feel like I'm Anne Frank hiding behind her bookcase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, the, know. The, ro the room is fortified. I, I, there's right. stuff at the window, there's stuff behind me to shield me a little bit. And I'm yet, I'm being irradiated as I'm sitting here. You know, and I know Karen is, she's wearing that cap and she's got everything mm -hmm. around her. And, you know, Midge, it's so. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. So what's happening, unfortunately, right now is evidence. I hope the world is listening and watching because what's happening with Ahmed's audio and video is absolutely evidence that we are being hacked in real time and sabotaged in real time. You know, they don't want the little Auschwitz survivors to be speaking out. No. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They've been trying to shut me up for years. You know, I've had two attempts in my life at least. And, uh, you know, going through the divorce, one of the attorneys called me up, one of the business attorneys, and said, you're making him mad. And I said, why? And they said, you have an uncanny ability to find things. <laughs> and I kind of do. I do. I have a sixth sense, and I do have an ability to find. I have, do have a gift there. So it has served me well now. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can do something about it. You would hate, you know, the hard part too is that it's hard to imagine such a massive amount of corruption. I mean, it's hard to, you know, come to terms with that and to think that it's real because who would do that? You know, I mean, we don't think like that, nor do we act like that. So it's hard for us to accept that others can be that way. Yes, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, and so that's the hard part of it, you mm -hmm. know, truly. It took me years to to come to terms with it all and to, you know, say to myself, yeah, this is, this is real. And yeah, it's yeah. extraordinary. It's extraordinary what we are going through and what we are being put through. And uh, in, in a sense, what you have uncovered, Midge, and what we are hoping to present tonight is sort of the extra layer to what we are going through. Because it's not enough that we are being absolutely assaulted in the most right. idiotic and insane of ways. Well, you know? yeah. I'm sorry, Ramallah. Go ahead. Uh, I was just saying it's not just that we are being assaulted in the most insane of ways, you know, in this 24-7 fashion mm -hmm. with the stealth weaponry. But in addition to that, we are beginning to find out through your discoveries that it's entirely possible that not merely are we being 
thrown under surveillance for the for and very bad surveillance for wrong reasons mm -hmm. we're also being exploited right. in terrible ways you know and there's a lot of money involved right right exactly and, mm -hmm. And um, so in any case, I guess we can begin to, you know, start talking about that because I kind of wanted to establish that you have the background and the knowledge to understand the real estate world mm -hmm. and to understand these databases. And then we could move on to what you began to discover as you started to work on your own case, right? With um, the issue of your properties and so Right. Forth. Well, you know, going through the civil suit now, I was dating uh, a criminal attorney and he asked to see my divorce decree and I showed it to him he was also the past president of the state bar of Arizona so I showed him my divorce decree and, and gave him a background of what had happened and then he suggested that I hire his law partner to go after my ex-husband and that I should file a civil suit for uh, the attorney business partner for breach of fiduciary duty. Well, now all of that was a setup. I had just sold my home, I made some money, and that was part of uh, spinning down my money. And then I moved into a condo after I sold my home, and that condo was a huge setup for targeting. That's what it was for. Hmm. And I had never heard of anything like it in my life. I didn't know people could get radiated. And, uh, and then from there, I was already implanted and did not know it during my marriage. And Can now, you talk about, can hmm. you, actually, Ahmed has been sending me some questions. And he, one of the things that he's asked is, can you talk a little bit about that, the targeting that you experienced? For instance, this implantation. I mean, how did you find out about that? Oh, well, I had a professional scan done. Uh, there was one point in my marriage I just knew something was different, though I'd had surgery for something and I never felt the same since. And I just remembered saying to my ex-husband, you know, something's wrong here, something's not right. And that's when I think that I was implanted with telephoresis in my extremities. Mm -hmm. And then um, as the targeting started and I did not know what was going on, it was suggested that I get a sleep study done. And I really didn't think I needed a sleep study. Um, I, they discovered I had asthma, which I'd never had asthma before. And so I had the sleep study done. And then it was shortly after that that everything hit. And I do believe that that's when my brain waves were stolen, so to speak. Uh, and at the sleep. I, at the sleep. And I was um, implanted even more. Because I, I thought, oh, I'm not going to sleep. You know, who could sleep here? And the next thing I know, I was out. The next thing I know, it was in the morning. I had to go to work. And oh. so, but it was at, shortly after that is when everything started. And I couldn't make heads or tails what was going on. The attorney business or the attorney um, boyfriend, the criminal attorney, gaslighted me to my children. My children had not lived in the state of Arizona for 11 years. And I was so excited that my son-in-law got stationed here in Arizona. Uh, he was in the Air Force, a pilot. And mm -hmm. so it was one week or one month after they moved here that I was gaslighted by my boyfriend. So from there, I mean, it was just a real mess. And I didn't know what was going on. I mean, I would have a girlfriend with me and I'd go home and my doors would be open to my condo. And I suspected that I was under surveillance in my home. And so I did hire a PI who did a search and uh, he said he couldn't find anything and then come to find out he's a double agent. So I think that some of these uh, small communities or larger communities are training places for this gang stalking. Mm -hmm. Oh dear, I guess that was me. Yeah. Maybe oh. I... I don't see Karen and I don't see Ahmed anymore. Ahmed seemed to have left the chat, so I thought I would re-invite him. Okay, I don't which see Which is Karen. what I did, and I don't see Karen. Shall I re-invite her as well? I think so. Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. This is absolutely amazing. Trying so hard. Uh, we must be doing something okay. right. 
that's, yeah, that's right. Karen. That's, that's exactly right. correct. We are doing something right. You know, we are doing something absolutely right if we are being hacked and sabotaged in such an excessive way. Yeah, right. I just was thrown out. And, you know, I have have a heart condition since all this stuff started. And I've had chest pains off and on, and I can't seem to get my heart medication. I've been waiting three days to get that prescription. And so this is how things go for me. And that is just so inhumane that I cannot get my medication. And I keep falling, and I keep getting different excuses. So I find that wow. to be atrocious, you know, putting me in harm's way like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, why am I hearing the stone? Well, is it on my phone? This is so. Oh, awesome. hear me. Uh, is it still a lag? I I can hear you now, Ahmed. The the browser that was actually me. They didn't knock me off, but the browser was almost like processing power. So they. Sometimes that'll happen. They'll, it's like they'll overload an app. So is it fluid now? Can you hear me? Is it, or is it choppy? No, pretty well. It's great. Okay. I'm thrilled that we can hear See you. If it lasts. Like sometimes it'll, it'll just the app over time. We'll know exactly what they're doing, but they, they um, it's like a memory leak. And that one application will just get so bloated mm -hmm. that everything starts to, maybe that'll take care of it. Okay. All right. So, um, so Midge, you were talking did you hear about that. Okay. We did hear that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Midge was been generally just talking about you know various aspects of her targeting, the ways in which she's been hit. I was like, right. Yeah. You know, I had some really good friends. Mm -hmm. um, he's an aeronautical engineer with a specialty in radio waves. And they invited me to their home. And so I lived with them for a while. He understood exactly what was going on, even though I was still clueless for a long time. And he protected me. And then we put up cameras outside of the home and, in, and inside the home as well. And um, so we have videotaped all kinds of weird things, drones flying in, um, you know, neighbors doing things. I had a truckload of men pull in early one morning and they were shooting flares up in the sky to um, mark where I was. And sorry, I have a, a little bit of a problem with someone who keeps calling me. And, um, and so I had all kinds of things. I told my friends that I would hear footsteps around the house in, in the wee hours of the morning. And, you know, this is a little bit of a perp who keeps calling. Sorry. Keep it off the hook. I told her I could not talk to her today and I won't go into it all. I'm going to shut down my phone anyhow. Um, so, so sure enough, it snowed and we saw, they saw that there were footsteps around the house and um, you know, I had tinnitus so bad that I would have gushing nosebleeds. Oh. And then oddly enough, the PI that I had hired had an EMF little EMF device. And um, he let us use it. We tried it out in front of the microwave oven and it would go off. And so um, we set it beside my bed and that would go off. I have videos of it going off at two and three o'clock in the morning lighting up. So um, clearly under radiation assaults. And, um, you know, the bad part was that, you know, I had, it was, uh, you know, the good old boy system. And I was surrounded by my ex-husband. I have him on my stalking videos. I had order protection that went missing in the system. Mm -hmm. And I, that's pretty, pretty horrific. Um, so I have him on my stalking videos during the order protection. So it seems like no matter, he could do anything at all to me and nobody would do anything. Mm -hmm. I left at one point and went to Oregon to live and everything seemed to calm down, but um, we were followed, my girlfriend and I. We were driving to Oregon, and we were followed. And so I have that on video, you know, followed across state lines, nobody doing anything. And um, 
And so the stalking continued when I got to Oregon. And I did see my ex-husband. I don't have proof of that, but I, I did see him. And so um, I had to come back to Arizona. And um, when I did, I made, a, I made an appointment with the chief of police. And so I did a presentation. I had a lot of, um, I had our, I had, I had done a lot of journaling and evidence, pictures and videos and different things related to my ex-husband. So I did a presentation to the chief and two detectives and his secretary. And halfway through my presentation, he threw up his hands and he goes, we believe you. We totally believe you. So he opened, <laughs> he opened up a stalking investigation on my behalf. And I am forever grateful. And it did not go anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't expect it to go anywhere. But just to get that acknowledgement, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's huge. And uh, since then, the chief of police has resigned from his position. And we talked recently. Mm -hmm. And he told me that he was sorry that his, his hands were tied. And I understood that mm -hmm. because... Um, you know, what's happened is after 9-11, the hierarchy of our law, our law enforcement has totally changed. Mm -hmm. It is now DHS and ICE who have partnered up with um, the Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. And when I first moved to Prescott, uh, I was dating the prosecuting attorney for the city of Prescott. And he informed me that it was the good old boys uh, the brotherhood that was running everything behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And he told me how that was structured. And he told me that the chief of police and the mayor and the city council were just um, figureheads, that um, it was um, the brotherhood who was controlling everything mm -hmm. and how they have to be invited to join. And then they have to pony up so much money, which is in the thousands of dollars. And I had no idea what he was talking about. I mean, I was so clueless. I had never heard of anything like that in my life. And when you say the brotherhood, I mean, who exactly are we talking about? We're talking about the businessmen in town. Yeah, in, so the part, yeah. Of the, part of the Freemason connection. Absolutely. Well, the, the ex, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the boyfriend at the time, the criminal attorney, mm -hmm. he has a gesture with the Masonic, you know, um, with the Shriners. So that's his connection there. And so, I mean, it's all, they're all affiliated with each other. Yeah. So, is, is there, was there also a Satanist connection there? By well, any my ex-husband is a Satanist. And so I have found evidence. I did not know that while we were married, he has a forked tongue. Um, another a family member and I were talking about it the other day I'd totally forgotten and he brought it up and he goes what was with that and I said I don't know he wasn't that wasn't like that in high school because we dated in high school mm -hmm. and so he does have a forked tongue and um, so he's actually gone through some ritual that actually yeah, physically ritual. changed his uh, yeah. I talked to Dr. Staniger today and she checked it out with someone who's a target um, and uh, who knows a lot about this stuff and so she said, yes, he's gone through a satanic ritual, is what she can imagine. So he's gone through satanic ritual. So, yeah. but I have since pulled up information uh, attaching him to Satanism, yes. And you know, the other thing I wanted to actually ask you about, um, maybe you've mentioned it briefly, was um, the whole issue of who exactly your ex-husband is, and you know, the, the fact that he appears to be connected. Mm -hmm. He has connections. He has a lot of connections. Well, he's a billionaire, and he is a DOD contractor with Arcadis, and he and his business partner own uh, the third largest uh, cell tower company in the world, Global Signal Acquisitions and Crown Castle. And I knew, um, well, in hindsight, I'd hear them say things about uh, radiating people or making a joke about it and how they would get their way. They would just... You know, they were uh, actually doing mind control on people back then, and I didn't know, I didn't have a clue. But I would hear snippets of conversations and how they would joke and laugh about, you know, how they would merely suggest something to someone after they had been doing this to them, and they would go along with it, including police uh, officers. 
So, you know, what I'm seeing is that they're putting the cell towers in front of town council, uh, in front of the police departments, the fire department, and they're actually, they're, you know, radiating them. And that's why, you know, they go along with all this stuff. I mean, it's awful what's happening, but it's true. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about actual mind control, in other words, frequencies that are impinging on people's brains and changing right. their brain, right? Right, right. And, uh, you know, just in the last year alone, there's been two firefighters in Tucson who have uh, gone on a killing spree and killed their wives. They were going through divorce and killed family members. I mean, I don't know the, both the stories very completely, but I've heard that just in the last two weeks. And somebody said to me, what's going on in Tucson? What's going on with the fire department? But clearly you can kind of understand uh, what is going on. You know, this is outrageous. Mm -hmm. You know, Ahmed's just interjected with a couple of questions. Ahmed, did you want to try to speak and, you know, see if you can ask questions yourself or? Yeah, I'll try. I think there's about a seven second lag now. Oh, you're good now. You're good. Oh, uh -huh. oh good. Fantastic. Really sorry that you've gone through all that, Midge. Thanks. Uh, sure. Did you did you experience? Uh, and if this is too personal, you don't have to talk about it. But you experienced any kinds of ritual abuse or anything uh, going? Husband did, and also. Um, do you think that uh, sir, these who are into the stuff in, in the Freemasons, do you have? Do you think they ever is also working on those uh, who are? Yes, uh, you know, no, I had none of that happen to me, um, but you know, I lived a life where what he said went, and if I didn't do what he wanted, he did it behind my back. Big things you know, took things away from me, threw away, you know, hundreds of personal pictures because he didn't want them in the home and uh, pictures that belonged to my children, put them in a garbage sack and took them to a dumpster at a gas station and threw them away. Um, just things that he didn't like. Um, I had been married before to someone that we all went to high school with, my children's father. And um, these pictures were in my children's photo albums. And I had left one day to go shopping with a friend. And while I was gone, he decided to throw the pictures away, hundreds of pictures. And uh, so my children are without pictures of their father and family and stuff like that. And so it was kind of like that, you know, everything was always according to him. And, um, you know, we had bought a car for my daughter and when she, cause she was going to school, high school, and, you know, he had told her that she could keep the car as long as she stayed living with us, but that she could not take the car back to Phoenix where her father lived. And she basically, he didn't want her living with her father. So after she graduated from high school, she did move back to Phoenix. And um, because she was going to go to school there and um, the car got stolen one day from her father's driveway. And then we found it and we had been stripped. And, and now I've been told that he did that. He had the car stolen because he had told her she could not keep the car if she moved back to, you know, Phoenix to be with her father. And so that's kind of how we lived, you know. And I just tried to keep a lot of things from my children. And, uh, you know, it just kind of went on and on. I didn't, you know, there's just a lot I didn't know. Um, he totally had a separate life. I did know that he had a relationship with the FBI. He, he did come home one day and he wanted my opinion about, um, he said the FBI, I wanted to use our garbage company to spy on one of our customers. And how did I feel about that? And I said, well, it just, I guess, depends upon what they've done. But I felt like we kind of had an obligation to our customers. So it was kind right. of a hard call. It wasn't certainly my call, but I thought it was kind of odd that he asked me. And, uh, you know, it was just, uh, it wasn't all bad. We lived in Canada during the summers in a beautiful, beautiful place. And, you know, I, I really didn't see this ugly side until the very end. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more powerful he got, the more successful, the more money, then the more 
out of control. Everything became, mm -hmm. you know. So, but, you know, he never left me alone even after I left him. He, uh, you know, this is another thing. I discovered that he was um, creating bogus W-2s in my name, claiming me as an, an employee on one through one of his businesses. And that was discovered going through the divorce. And, um, mm -hmm. because and when he does that, what is the advantage or gain to him when he does that? Well, um, what he was doing was that he was claiming me as an employee. And so therefore he could get insurance like a group insurance and he'd get a discount. And so that's why, that's what he told me. That's all that I know. But um, yeah, he, um, he did things like that all the time. So. Um, it's a lot of duplicity, a lot of fraud, a lot of. <laughs> that's not, that was it <laughs> all the time, all the time. So I don't, like I said, I don't even know the half of it. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you learned stuff only later. You picked up stuff only later. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, an yeah. incredible amount. I'm still in shock. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. 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 Are, are your kids affected by the targeting and the directed energy? And through have, have you have they experienced or do you experience no. No. any kind of of influence uh, with the technology? No, um, not that I'm aware of, not that they've said. Uh, it's Other things have happened to other family members. And um, he has radiated other people in the family. He has gang-stalked someone else in the family. And so um, I just didn't know what it meant. I had no idea till it was turned on me how massive and how big and how awful this stuff is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and it's interesting. Thing because in your case, you kind of know it's your ex-husband who kind of initiated it. And he's working in tandem or in connection with the local hoodlums, you know, the, the brotherhood or the Masonic people and the, the Satanists and so forth in the vicinity, in, in Prescott and in Phoenix. Is that right? Yeah. And, you know, Ahmed had a really interesting question about the Satanists and the neurotech. I understand all of us who've been dealing and learning about this neurotech that it's really powerful and it, it, it does all sorts of things. It can, it can change people's emotions, it can change people's actions, their behavior, and so forth. And his question was, do you think the Satanists are being influenced with neurotech? Do you think your husband was influenced by neurotech? You know, trying to make sense of all this, yeah, I've done that, absolutely. Because it's still very hard for me to come to terms with this is how it is, really. Mm -hmm. This is how he is. This is what he has chosen. And, you know, in 2001, though, he did tell me that he was um, running the universe, so to speak. That's what he told me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I had, no, I, I had no idea what he meant. But clearly he was on his way to doing this already. Mm -hmm. And that, that was, had to have been, you know, mm -hmm. gosh, 14, 15, 16 years ago. And we're talking about somebody who's in charge of huge telecom companies, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Cell tower companies. Yes. So he has access to satellites. Absolutely. Yeah. So when he says something like, I'm running the universe, it's not exactly, he may not be running the universe per se, but he's got access to satellites, which means he can, he can indeed drench huge areas with radiation. Right. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. By far. You know, even the day that I got married, my I now I know that he had radiated me. My be underneath my makeup on my wedding day, I'm beat red and I didn't know what had happened to me. And so I had to get a steroid shot after the wedding. So because and so it's like who does that? Yeah, so you're talking about somebody with some kind of psychopathic yeah. approach to life. Right. Exactly. So, Someone who's interested in absolute control, even of his own wife. Yeah, exactly. And uh, always, you know, talking about the future and computers and very fascinated, you know, very brilliant in math and, and uh, the sciences. And so um, I think it's always been his goal to, you know, learn about CERN and robots and things like that.
until he looks at the world in a different way. You know, mm -hmm. we're opposites. <laughs> yep. Ma'am, uh, is ketogenics model uh, from from my research and from what I've transhumanism, the yeah. you know all the futuristic mm -hmm. and theories. There, they have to belly is control and enslavement and depopulation since you know mm -hmm. yeah, by and that he, yeah that he's a part of it makes sense that he's interested in that mm -hmm. tractor i've come across a lot too the dod and cia seem to be players in this mm -hmm. um in terms of the i mean the dhs like you said ice and the local law enforcement mm -hmm. but uh the dod uh, I've had my uh, computer hacked. I've traced the IP addresses to the DOD. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the contractors, it seems like they're doing a lot of private, with most of the gang stalking, they're doing, doing private outsourcing of these contract artists for this. Oh, that's okay. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a massive business. It is a well-organized, huge business money-making business yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and maybe at this point we can go a little bit deeper into it Mitch if you wanted to start talking about it and maybe Karen you can jump in here as well because you were talking about how we could present this information that Mitch has actually discovered um, going into those databases well let's recap a little bit for people who may not have any knowledge of this um, mm -hmm. The terrorist watch list has been used as a springboard to advance the police state and to um, create a money base by which to create all kinds of private security companies that in turn basically harass people. I mean, we really don't have enough real terrorists in the United States to have expanded the police state the way that we do. So it's a money-making scheme, and they quickly discovered there weren't enough terrorists basically to fund the entire uh, project that they wished to expand with. So they just started throwing on the names of random people, it looks like, and then added things like ex-wives or business partners they had a grudge against or um, whistleblowers like myself or maybe even journalists who told the truth when they didn't want them to. So for any and all reasons, people get put on the terrorist watch list. And uh, Trey Gowdy had an interview with a person who was uh, a manager from DHS. It was filmed. It was on TV. And he was asking her, is there any way for someone to find out if they're on the watch list? And she said no. And he asked, is there any way for someone to appeal getting off the watch list if they suspect that they're on it and, and it's um, basically an error or, you know, as we know, it's malicious. And she said, no, there's no way to appeal. It, you know, they basically block people using the excuse of national security. So they have a captive audience upon whom they are making their money. And they will mm -hmm. not tell them that they've been falsely put on the watch list because they don't want to be outed for doing that. So they claim uh, national security. So this we know at the start is, um, is the beginning of the fraud. Now what Midge uh, has discovered is mm -hmm. that they anticipate our deaths. They anticipate killing us with these weapons. And they've made sure that there's a big payoff at the end of our lives as well. And I, I will turn that over to Midge now. Yeah, you know, it, I started, you know, researching different things here in Arizona, and I saw my children's names attached to trust accounts, my name, my grandchildren, and it just seemed, you know, something was really, really wrong. I was, again, in shock. And then Karen called me up one day, and she said, hey, can you do a search for me here in Tallahassee, Florida, um, about some neighbors? And I said, sure, and I had never looked at that website before but I taught myself how to do it and um, discovered that her one neighbor has a, a home business and then saw that he was doing business uh, as a church so they don't have to pay taxes well I had seen that church before the name of it here in Arizona and that threw up a huge red flag and I thought how can that be the same church 
And so then I thought something's not right. So I put my name in and properties came up attached to my name in various ways, not just one way, in all ways, every way possible. And then I put in my family members, my children, my grandchildren. It was very disturbing to see. And then I thought, well, I need to check and see if I'm on the right track. So I put in my ex-husband and his business partners, corporations and businesses, their names, and uh, their businesses attached to their names that I knew that they owned here in Arizona. So it was starting to really match up, and I knew it was on the right track. So, um, so it just led to this big awakening that, oh, my gosh, there's this huge um, you know, connection with some of these states. And then I started seeing that there were different um, addresses for the taxpayer for these companies stationed, you know, in Florida. Uh, some of them were coming back to Arizona, some were going to Texas, some were going to California, or one was, you know, one was going, I think, to, I think it was North Dakota, but several states where they don't have to pay taxes. So I've done enough of this stuff that I, um, it kind of, it, clicked that I had seen these addresses before with some of the businesses here in, in Arizona. Because like I said, I've been doing this for quite a while. And so um, I thought, well, if they're using our names, um, then, you know, who else are they using? So I took a look at the list of 9-11 victims and I pulled up five that were, you know, really odd that nobody else in the world would have probably. The and names. so I plugged those. Unique names. Yeah, unique, thank you. Unique names. And uh, they came up as well. So then, you know, it just made sense that if they're using our names, then they have to be using our social security numbers illegally. And if you're doing intelligent work, intelligence, um, well, then you have access to all those names or all those social security numbers. Mm -hmm. So um, I got Karen's. Well, first I put in mine. Mm -hmm. I put in a few of my... Uh, relatives they're there I and it matched up with that, what I had been doing and then I got Karen's put hers in now you know there should be nothing coming up mm -hmm. unless you have you know been an owner of in Arizona right? this is well both in, in, in Tallahassee Florida oh, okay. and in Arizona mm -hmm. so I started seeing a real correlation and then I started seeing that things that came up under my name here in Arizona came up under Karen's name in Tallahassee, Florida. So I started like connecting the dots to some of these corporations and stuff. And that just led to a huge um, discovery. I'm still in shock. And since then, I've gone to New York, to a county in New York, and have found basically the same information I've gone to Sacramento County in California and taught myself their system, pulled up this basically the same. It may be a little bit different or they might take a little bit different um, a title to a business, but it's the same. I mean, you put in a search for the NSA and basically the same information comes up. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I, of course I put in my ex-husband's businesses and that's always a real telltale sign right there for me. Um, but, you know, I knew that they had call centers um, here in Arizona, and so a lot of those call centers would show up uh, with under the mailing addresses for some of these properties. So it's a huge, you know, connection, a huge connect the dots. And so I said to Karen, there's something really wrong here, really wrong. And um, I started searching Karen's name here in Arizona and I came up with some trust accounts under her name, which is very disturbing. Because and I guarantee you I have nobody in Arizona who should have a trust that I'm sharing or a trust uh, from me or for me. Well, I have even one that says K Stewart NSA trust. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's pretty, I'll show it to you. It's pretty blatant. You know, that's wow. like, Oh uh, yes. That'd be cool. Incredible. You, well, I'll show it to you. Yeah, well, please. Yeah, do you want me, to share a screen? Yeah, let me interject just for a moment. Um, 
NSA basically was stalking and harassing me because I had asked some questions they didn't like. And then uh, five years down the road when they couldn't get me to drop my EEOC lawsuit against them, and we had subpoenaed new damning evidence, they had people in Tallahassee start up the stalking harassment as well. Now, in the, uh, that was in April of 2015 or so. And in November of 2015, I had a Twitter spat with someone who turned out to be Bill Black Jr. from NSA, who used to be the deputy director. And he basically said, you better hope I'm not the Bill Black Jr. And that was rather narcissistic. So I knew immediately it was exactly uh, <laughs> the retired NSA deputy. And he erased all of our exchange because I had said something on Twitter about the fact that when I was at NSA, I had two separate analysts tell me that uh, NSA management knew months ahead of time that 9-11 was going to happen and refused to let them warn anybody. Now, if you're going to take a few months to gather information on people you know are going to die, and take out insurance policies and trust funds, then I guess that would upset him for him, uh, upset him for me to say so in a public forum. Mm -hmm. So he was furious. And within a few days I was getting, I was receiving electronic harassment of a uh, hor horrific level in Tallahassee, Florida. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a direct a tie with Bill Black Jr. I don't mind saying it. And I've told Midge to go ahead and use whatever she found as an example, make it public. I don't care. Tell anybody, everybody, if it serves the purpose, use it because I know exactly who targeted me. Right. And if you tell the truth, see, like I did, uh, you know, with the civil suit against my ex and all the corruption and now Karen, uh, then you um, get targeted and you get hurt because they're trying to intimidate you. They're actually trying to kill us mm -hmm. uh, because we're telling the truth. And actually, you know, we're just trying to take care of ourselves. You know, I had every right to do what I did. Um, I wasn't breaking any laws or anything. I mean, I was using the, our legal system and, uh, and then now look what's happened to me. And when I, people see my pictures, I mean, they're pretty horrific. It's pretty horrible to think that um, your ex-husband would do that to you on top of everything else. Yes, and, and the burns on your face have been just unbelievable. They're horrible. Uh, I just was horrified. Yeah, me too. Uh, to know that someone, you know, has the capabilities, the mindset to do that. And then, you know, two of the burns, one occurred on my November 5th, which is my wedding anniversary to my first husband. And the other one happened on my birthday. So that's very psychopathic behavior. And, um, you know, just trying to shut mm -hmm. me up, trying to kill me. I was hit with the active denial system while I was driving last April and wound up in the ER and have pictures of that. Uh, the police department did take pictures. The ER doctor gave me a diagnosis of radiation burns. And so I've since then have pulled up Active Denial Alliance here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So they have an alliance. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of this stuff, you know, they're these big bullies with a lot of money. They've gotten the money through corruption. And uh, now they have these weapons. Mm -hmm. And so they're using these weapons in order to keep people quiet about their corruption so they can keep on doing all these nefarious and horrible things. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. get the weapons through their um, contractor connections. That's right. Absolutely. So the DOD is pulled directly into this incredible corruption. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh my gosh, yes, I've pulled up DOD it's information in Tallahassee, Florida, and here that are the very same with that equipment I think I shared with you guys that is hitting me and hurting me. So well, very quickly, Mitch found that a rental house in my neighborhood in Tallahassee, Florida, that was being rented by what appeared to be the lead uh, or the handler for the people in the neighborhood helping them harass, meaning hosting the directed energy weapons at their homes and then reporting to this particular man on Cynthia Drive, um, the house that he was renting was listed under DOD, was it not, as being owned That's by right. DOD. A That's private right. house in a civilian neighborhood 
was owned by Department of Defense. Right. Wow. Yes, and see, you know, people need to look at their own home. And, you know, recently, well, it was um, February 14th, I went to the FBI here in Phoenix. I went to their headquarters. It was my second visit. I showed them my pictures, my face being burned. I showed them all the information uh, with the DOD, with my name. And, um, and so I had all this information. Uh, but I also showed them corruption with the real estate whereby they're using my girlfriend's uh, trust account, my girlfriend who I live with. They're using her name, the account number, to purchase other properties. And so I showed them that, and that's when they told me to go to the Secret Service. Um, they pointed to my pictures and said that. They didn't know if I would be able to get him on the pictures and, and all the other stuff that I found, but I could get him on the real estate corruption. So uh, it gets really hard when, you know, you can't get anywhere. Yeah, and, and people know. I mean, you know, it's not like I'm not well known. My ex-husband is well, well known. And so people do know what's going on. But, you know, we lack a lot of uh, brave souls these days. You know, people aren't as brave as they used to be, it seems like. No, they don't have the integrity. No. Um, and you did find a connection between Bill Black and your husband. Yes, absolutely. Because I have found their names on several things in their businesses and they very much know each other. So, and I just remember one day he came home and, you know, things were kind of falling apart and he said, okay, you're number three on, on during the week. He said, um, you're number one on the, during the evenings and the weekends. And I thought, well, that's kind of strange. He goes, and I don't have to tell you who I'm with or where I've been. And I thought, well, that's really strange too. Well, see, now I know he was interfacing with all these people. And, uh, you know, he certainly couldn't tell me that he was, uh, you know, knew Bill Black or anybody else in the government that he was dealing with, you know. I had, no, I had no clue. I was totally clueless. So literally at this point in time, we are outing the DOD and the NSA because Bill Black was deputy director of the NSA. Yeah. And the DOD is owning houses and engaging in trust fund fraud. Yeah. See, what they're doing too is that it's a global um, financial profit sharing program is what I'm seeing. Because if you put in the NSA, well, you know what? It doesn't seem to me that you should be, you know, owning restaurants and and uh, subdivisions and and that you're interfacing with you know a DOD contractor you know general contractor and so forth and so on I mean this is on all levels of government mm -hmm. and so it started dawning on me that this is a global profit sharing program mm -hmm. and that's why also it's hard for us to get anywhere because uh, you know everyone want, is protecting their pocketbook or they're scared or they're threatened you know, and I know that has happened in my case. Yeah, right. You know, I had some friends going through the divorce, very good friends. And my ex went to them and basically wanted them to pledge their allegiance, you know, choose which side. And they said, you know, he said, and if you choose me, then you have to abuse her. You have to be mean to her. You have to verbally abuse her. Um, this is what they told me. And, um, and they said, no, we can't do that. We love her. She's our good friend. We support her. And so then he and his business partner left. And then the business partner went back and tried to strong arm them into uh, doing what he wanted them to do. And they didn't. And so now something has happened to one of them. I'm so sorry. And what you're talking about really is the same program of targeting that pretty much everybody whom we know in this community is experiencing, where uh, you suddenly become the target of defamation and slander campaigns mm -hmm. run, run by people with badges in your neighborhood. Right. right. And all these stories being set up around you that you are a pedophile and you are a prostitute. But in actuality, you know, you're an, you're an actor or a director or a whistleblower or, right. a, or a nurse or a journalist, and you have had nothing to do with any of this, except you may have at some point spoken out about corruption. Yeah. Uh, so we have this weird sort of scenario currently in our country. Sorry? I don't, I don't even think you have to speak out about corruption. They're, they're profiling and surveilling people for, for decades. Mm -hmm the earth they're watching they're they're doing personality profiles on even children 
and they're surveilling you in your own home. So if you're speaking out an opinionated in your own family, they could mark you as a potential dissident. Right. Than right. just yet, people speaking out in public. And I wanted to underline the irony of that. So you have these corrupt criminals running these vast corrupt operations, you know, involving financial fraud, involving all sorts of means of financial exploitation, mm -hmm. who are turning around and marking and labeling people at will as precisely the kind of criminals that they are. Right. You know? It's a yeah, they get their accusations, accusations from looking in the mirror. Right. Yeah, there you go. There you projecting, go. Uh, they're it's projecting project their own psychopathic model. It's a projection of their own. So yes. anything they are, they accuse you of. And yeah, and, and it's very funny because, you know, it's such a cover operation. It's like they're kind of appealing to a, a base understanding of an integrity and morality in society and then marking us when they are the ones who are running these criminal operations. Right. It's the ones who are telling the truth mm -hmm. or the ones who are getting um, hammered. Exactly. Hammer. And, you know, I mean, I have a whole list of friends that horrible things have happened to. Um, my ex-husband assaulted me one night in a hotel room. I was at my goddaughter's graduation from college. And um, so my goddaughter's father tried to help me. He gave me advice. He had been my EMT teacher. He was a retired Phoenix firefighter. I've known him a long, long time. He did 9-11 search and rescue, Oklahoma City bombing, a spokesperson for the Phoenix Fire Department. And um, because he tried to help me, he wound up with V2K and wound up in a mental hospital. And so, so. then um, I have two friends who have... Um, started smelling smoke and uh, one was diagnosed as having small brain seizures mm -hmm. and, uh, and nobody else smells smoke but them mm -hmm. and I actually have had two friends who have lost their sense of taste and smell mm -hmm. um, I mean I can go on down the list and so and this this is outrageous yeah outrageous and this is what the neurotech can do I gotta write that down because you know you have given me some great information for new research Ramola and it has turned up some really interesting stuff oh absolutely you know Ahmed I had talked to Midge about you know brain computer interfaces and I think she looked that up mm -hmm. BCI yeah. uh, hyphen CBI um, and this neurotech right. we're reading about it uh, now Midge I mean it can and people that we know are experiencing this because they're being non-consensually experimented on with this okay so-called top secret near attack that's in the hands of criminals sure. well, um, it's, it's right here this is he's doing it i mean it's all right here i put it in a search you can see the search at the bottom it says bci dash cbi just like you told me ramola mm. and so all this information came up which also matches some of the information that i have on these boards that i made. and so it's now i'm starting to connect the dots with the government along with the corporations mm -hmm. uh, and some of the universities involved in this horrible horrible business that they're doing well we are talking deep state so when people think about this it's the government within the government it is right. the government that's hiding under what appears to be a shill or a shell of a government that they let them pretend to be running things, but when they interfere with the crim with the crime syndicate, then the senators and congressmen learn that they've uh, stepped over a line, which is very sad. Well, it's pretty disturbing when I put in the yeah, senator. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. I'm sorry, I meant what? I was going to say, unfortunately, Karen, I don't think. I think the government has been a shell of a government for for a long time. Yeah, you know, but you now they're viciously back. lethal. Yes, yeah, well, they're going overt. They're going overt with their fascist, fascistic principles. Mm -hmm. right, and they've got yeah. this great weaponry now, this absolute stealth weaponry. You know that they can hide behind and pretend doesn't exist. When our local PDs are being provided with true wall surveillance radar and Doppler radar and pulse radar and whatnot. Um, you know, so that the irony and the extreme um, crime and criminality here 
is just so shocking. It's mind blowing. And and of course we have a, a defunct media that doesn't cover any of this. And this is why this is not talked about openly. Yeah. And we've got our neighbors who have turned into sociopaths with the mention of the almighty dollar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, um, the government says that I, oh, I can kill somebody and get away with it with a secret weapon that I could use in a cowardly distant fashion and I'm not only going to be guaranteed that nobody can prosecute me but I'll get paid for it sure let me do that I'm protected you see yeah what happened yeah. to humans I mean I used to, I, <laughs> what happened to the humans in our society because I do not recognize that as human no. well it's a smart psychological tool because if you use if money becomes the overarching value for everyone in a society and then you tap into people who are marginalized or extremely poor, and you give them the potential to, to do harm to you with impunity them in a way that they've never been empowered. And not only that, they get paid for it. Effective way they, I think, it, it brought it, people yes. into this performance system. You know, they've started at the lower levels and the, and the uh, people, the felons, and, and then they move up and outward. And if they have to go to higher like smarter, more educated people, then they're going to act patriotism nonsense that you're doing this for national security. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the people in Florida who were targeting me... Which is an me, absolute sham, but... Yes, well, it was probably always meant to be. But um, the people in my parents' neighborhood, when I was staying in Florida with my parents, the people in that neighborhood uh, were just as greedy, just as greedy as those people living in a shack who are happy to kill you for any kind of money, um, they were living in three and four hundred thousand dollar homes, but they were just as greedy. They were the ones getting right. brand new um, riding lawn mowers and new flooring, new carpeting, et cetera, et cetera. And they were oh so happy to do that for money, money, money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And the doctors, the doctors are that are implanting, you know, and um, I mean, my gosh. Yeah. A lot of betrayal, total betrayal of their oaths. Oh, absolutely. You know, like um, the one doctor that I suspect who did this um, to me, he all of a sudden came up, well, yeah, he owned a restaurant. Um, and so, you know, I can kind of tell, you know, who he's buddies with, who he's working for by the, the stores that surround his restaurant. Because you get to know the corporations and stuff doing these searches and what they own. And that's a real telltale sign right there, who he's doing business with or who he's working for. And, you know, I hope to out him one day, big time. Um, so I, the other doc, there's two doctors involved who have done my implanting. You know, I will um, say that I appreciate what the FBI said to me recently when I was there. Um, they said, you know what, let me guess your ex-husband's trying to make it look like you're crazy. So I said, oh, how'd you know? And I said, but it didn't work. So I just appreciated them saying that. And um, well, they know it. The, you of know, course they do. The FBI throughout the United States. I mean, when I, when I called them in Tallahassee, Florida, they would hang up on me as soon as I identified myself. And I, had, mm -hmm. and I didn't even get a chance to tell them what was going on. It's like, okay, we know your name. You're on the list to not help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Even if they want to, you know, even if they're, they're like white hats and or they're they're well. Well, you know, the FBI told me that I was entire oh. this point out of all. Well, you know, people need to wake up because look how easily this all happened to us mm -hmm. for doing nothing, mm -hmm. and uh, you know this this. It, you know, more and more it, this is happening to people, and I'm just determined, you know, to stop it because this is so wrong. Mm -hmm. We yeah. should talk about the FBI for just a minute because you know what's happened currently, right, with Trump firing Comey. Thank God, and, and it's about thank time. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's there's a hope, I guess, um, that perhaps this is the sign of some kind of cleaning up or cleaning house. Um, I mean, but. Look at what's happening with the FBI and look at what's happening in the country. The FBI right. is, is our figurehead organization, right? The Federal Bureau of Investigation. Right. Supposed to investigate crime. Right. And not committed. And not committed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Precisely. Right. 
Oh, yeah. my mistake. I misunderstood. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know, so it, it, this is how it's going, though. I see who runs their communication systems, and it's guess who in the Phoenix area, my ex-husband. The FBI's and, you know, communication yeah, system. Yeah, and, you know, the Fortune 500, all the EMS systems, uh, Sky Harbor Airport. I'm, I mean, I have the contracts. Um, the Peoria Police Department, where I live. And so I'm sure there's probably a lot of threats going on from him. You know, you try to do anything to me, I'll just cut out your whole communication system. <laughs> you know, so he has the leverage here. And so it's not right. But, um, but I'm assuming some of that is going on. There's too much, uh, too much of these private companies, these corporations that are interfacing with the government. And then you have the corporations, some of the um, members of the corporations are now infiltrating, like, you know, becoming a DOD contractor and so, and, and other things. And so it's just, uh, it's not a good mix at all. No. Well, not let's very, very briefly take a look at Bill Black Jr. He worked at NSA from 1959 to 1997. Then he retired, went to SAIC. And then in 2000, under General Hayden, he brought Bill Black Jr., back on board as deputy, he hadn't been deputy before, and he moved out Barbara McNamara, who had uh, received the highest award you can in the intelligence community. He brought in Bill Black Jr. mid-2000 and then scooted her out. And then um, Bill pretty much was in charge of Trailblazer, looking after the development of Trailblazer, which was a big controversial program that uh, basically sucked up everybody's information and it wasn't, that's not legal. It, it never mm -hmm. has been legal. And that is what Bill Binney was uh, basically blowing the whistle about. But uh, when Bill Black Jr. became the overseer of the project, then he brought in his former employer, SAIC, to oversee the development of it, which cost, uh, what, 180 or $280 million. And as Hayden left in 2005, I believe, he um, basically testified before Congress. He said, yes, well, Trailblazer is millions of dollars in uh, over what we estimate it to be, and it's years and years behind. So basically it was a whole total disaster. But could we think of that as maybe Bill Black Jr. coming in and asset stripping NSA? and the federal government for his former employer, 280 million for something that wasn't even legal. It sounds and like it, such a setup. And it didn't, it, it wasn't what it was supposed to be mm -hmm. at all. My gosh. And that's how they're all connected, isn't it, at the top? All of these private corporations. Yeah, right. holding hands, exactly. Well, yeah, you have the bankers, you know, who are part of the DOD who are part of the construction company for the FBI, who own the communication systems, you know, who are the realtors. I mean, it's just awful. So awful. The, same people, the same people are occupying several positions. They both, oh, they you both know, have the government yeah. out of it. And when the Patriot Act hit, and then, you know, President Obama gave that gluttony of money to every single state. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I studied up on that and saw that a lot of these corporations you know, double dip, triple dip, quadruple dipped into the, those funds and no accountability. And that some states claimed they had more counties than what they actually did. They were paid by county and nobody did a thing. And some of the states got, you know, a massive amount of extra funds because they claimed they had more counties and nobody cared. You know, this is outrageous outrageous and so I do believe that that's when a lot of this stuff really took off and then you know billions of dollars going to science research and uh, and that's when you know more facilities were being built for mm -hmm. genomics and stuff like that in Phoenix Arizona and so um, it's, and just, it's just an outrageous amount of gluttony everywhere mm -hmm. and more of these multidisciplinary uh, research projects being granted under COVID ops and, and under public domain research projects to universities and you know which now they're doing research in things like cybernetics, artificial intelligence um, and so forth, nanotechnology, synthetic biology, 
neurotechnology, and all of that is now out in the marketplace where they are using people under surveillance for experimentation, non-consensual experiments. Yeah. Right. You know, at one point when I was talking to a friend of mine who's retired FBI, he was teaching at an aeronautical school in Prescott, and I went to him for some advice. He had also been a homicide detective and had been a, a, with the Secret Service under the Clintons. And so he was, you know, helping me, you know, because I knew nothing. And he was kind of giving me my a history lesson. And so um, it wasn't long after that that I really got assaulted. And I was driving one night along a windy, dark road. And this big uh, vehicle came around the corner. And three men whistled from the vehicle. And they shot something into my eye. I looked at the vehicle as they whistled. And the headlights acted like magnets. And I could not look away. It was like when I had laser vision and they had some kind of magnet on my eye and you couldn't close your eye. So it was like that and they shot something into my left eye and I was temporarily blinded. And I think that was um, an attempt on my life because I could have driven off the side of the mountain. And then as I got down the mountain, there's a sheriff's, you know, vehicles with their lights flashing. And I mean, it was horrible. I had a hard time. I managed to get to my girlfriend's house, but you know, it was absolute, an absolute um, potential murder, mm -hmm. outright murder. And then you have local law enforcement uh, assisting. I mean, this is so horrible. And Anticipating so, the accident. Absolutely. So I um, did. I did go to the ophthalmologist who had uh, given me a diagnosis of radiation burns when I was first burned very badly. And I so I went back to see him after that happened. And I said to the doctor, I said, you know, the the headlights acted like magnets. Is that possible? And she said, yes. And that's all she would say. Well, I recognize that vehicle. I have been in it. Um, I know who owns it. I won't say anything more than that because they have been a part of this. I managed to try not to say too much about who they are. Um, it runs on nitrogen. It's a special made vehicle. And so I can imagine that I'm not the only one who's being assaulted. And, um, that those headlights, I have a picture of the vehicle. They're very, very big. And so can you imagine, I mean, you're just driving, mm -hmm. you know, by yourself, a single, you know, female, and you get assaulted like that. And then you have local law enforcement assisting. Mm -hmm. Well, I did file a, pre a police report, and a girlfriend mm -hmm. went with me. And then I found out two weeks later that that police report never was made. And so then my friend who worked at the station uh, created a police report and it was all just a lie and they said that I had been talking to my friend who was teaching at the aeronautical school um, ex-FBI guy um, that he was telling me about MK Ultra. that was the first time I heard that word and I was so upset I said no I said I, we weren't talking about that that is a lie I want you to take that out of the police report well I think they were trying to give me a clue because <laughs> yeah. they were probably looking at me like this poor lady has no clue what's going on and of course they did and so now I understand but still the police report was a lie and for two weeks they did not file a police report so there's been a huge amount of um, you know my rights being violated because of my ex-husband and who he is and you know just outright murder watching him murder me slowly or <laughs> In that case, that night, hoping I would just drive off this, the edge of the cliff. Mm -hmm. So it, that's so outrageous yeah. on so many levels. Yeah, because not not only were you the victim of an actual assault, it's possible they were experimenting with that weapon. They were testing that weapon out on you, and right. plus, it was an assassination attempt. It was an assassination attempt, as well as my last um, being hit with an active denial system where I wound up in the emergency room. And it happened while I was driving, and I felt like I got decapitated. I had that sensation, almost an out-of-body experience. And I really thought I was dead uh, or close to it. And so, um, I mean, it's horrible. These things should not be used on the streets. It should not be used on the civilians. I mean, I am just a grandmother, uh, you know, just an ex-wife of a really vicious, uh, ugly, evil person. And I've just been trying to get away and have a life. And I've not been able to have that life ever since I left him. 
So I just feel like this is just an outrage. Well, this is against the law. I mean, the U.S. federal law, uh, 18 U.S. Code 241 and 242 basically uh, say that it's against the law for people to conspire to take away your civil rights, your right to, you know, for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But if you go through 18 U.S. Code, multiple sections basically say it is totally illegal to use any type of directed energy weapon, which is classified as a weapon of mass destruction. You cannot have it as a civilian. You're not to allowed to have one of those in your possession. And you most certainly are not allowed to use it on another civilian. In fact, military is not allowed to use it on civilians who are non-combatants. So it is totally illegal. Mm -hmm. And yeah, even not to mention that even if they're trying to, in some way, cover up the legality of it by, you know, citing various defense directives and so forth, I would contend that all of it is null and void because the people that they're doing it to, they have no right to put under surveillance in the first place. There's no case. There really is no case. Exactly. And mm -hmm. that's why they're doing it secretly mm -hmm. because they don't want you to find out that they have a dossier on you that is absolute full of lies. I mean, what they do, it, what it seems like, and I spoke to a lawyer who worked, and she was a, a contract lawyer who worked for the Department of Justice, and she said, and she came under uh, attack as well, but she said it seemed to her that they would go maybe to the synagogues in the neighborhood and say she was anti-Semitic. Then they would go to uh, whatever other group and say she was anti them, and then another group and they, she was anti them. So they worked their way through different right. groups pressing hot buttons for that particular group in order to tell the lie about her. I mean, she mm -hmm. just, and we are, everything um, that's anathema to any and all groups. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're white, then you're anti-black. If you're black, then you're anti-white. You, you know, you're a child molester, you're just everything. They tell, you know, uh, maybe a parent's group for the school that you're a child molester or something like mm -hmm. that. When, you, <laughs> you know, not, not anything in the least. And so they just pick their their groups and manipulate them into whatever that group will actually hate and be more than happy to punish you for being whatever it is they they're calling you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you could be everything terrible to every single group you know according mm -hmm. to these people mm -hmm. yes and you know after 9 11 uh, these alliances were created which i have discovered by city city and county and by state and then by region across the United States. So these alliances were created that mesh private citizens with businesses, with corporations and government, which is a huge no-no. Is this through InfraGuard? Um, if I don't, you look I don't at InfraGuard, the yeah. alliance is listed under every InfraGuard in right. uh, the United States. Well, yeah, I started seeing friends that I had grown up with on these lists. And I thought, what is this? And then a couple of things had happened with some friends from, you know, school. Not bad stuff, but just enough now that I know that they were kind of in on it. And I thought, why would they do that to me? You know, one was like a brother. And then realized that they were on these alliances. And so there again, it's that profit sharing um, program by city. And they've allowed these um, big corporations to come into the city and wipe out all the mom and pop places and take over um, and run people out uh, like overnight. And mm -hmm. so I've seen things happen in my little town where I grew up that I never thought would happen. So that's when I discovered the alliances and then I discovered them uh, by city and so um, and then by county and and, uh, you know, they're called RAC, R-A-C, by county. And so if you see that, that's what that is. What is okay. the R for? It's R-A, do you know what it stands for? You know, I'll have to, I'll have to find that piece of paper. I pulled it up, but I, I can't remember what it is. You know, the, the government loves acronyms and, <laughs> you know, and stuff, so initials. Yeah, and part of what you've discovered, actually, through this database is through using acronyms, isn't it? And the sort of the absolutely. Well, you, yeah, I read Dr. Duncan's book, mm -hmm. and I had not read anything on this before. I mean, I've been quite clueless for a long time. You so thought it became a book? demon? Uh, no. Project Catcher? That one. There you go. Okay. Two. 
Project Sing Catch Up by yeah. Dr. And he talked about all the programs, and I had never heard of anything like that in my life. But everything had an acronym, mm -hmm. and I thought that kind of spoke to me that that was, you know, kind of a hint to something. Yeah. And that's really when I started discovering things. That's I started putting plugging in those acronyms mm -hmm. of those programs into this assessor website, and lo and behold, the equipment came up or the companies that are involved, mm -hmm. including the government. Yeah, and and so because they have to have an organized system. This is massive. And then, then you start to see who's connected to whom, who's in each other's back pocket, mm -hmm. then the alliances. I mean, it's really quite, uh, it's very well organized. And, uh, you know, it's like the alliances, I'm sure they don't have a clue, like by city what's really going on. I would like to think that they don't. I mean, they don't know that they're actually um, supporting um, the pedophilia rings that are going on in this state because it's the same group. And mm -hmm. so I often thought, well, if my friends knew that and if I could show them some information, how would they feel then, you know, about what's going on? And a lot of them, they do know what has happened to me. And so uh, some have unfriended me on Facebook, some, you know, because I think they're scared because they realize they've screwed up seriously because they're, they're good people. They really are. <laughs> <laughs> some good, some bad. Well, yeah, at least, you know, I'm talking about my friends who have oh. really not, not done much to me that, they're beholden to these alliances. You know, it's like, um, uh, I can say this, I think Dr. Staniger was explaining to me, she worked for North Northrop Grumman for a while. It was uh, Martin Marietta mm -hmm. before it became, um, no, Lockheed Martin, I'm sorry, Lockheed Martin. And Lockheed Martin had, when they w asked her to sign her contract, said, when you die, you must uh, give us everything. It has to be in your will. And that's a fact. And she said, can't do that. And that's when she left the company. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so I oftentimes I think that some of these, you know, big corporations and the way things are structured now, that that is uh, kind of what is being said to a lot of these folks. I mean, we'd have no clue. I know there's a lot of bad things that are being done and said to uh, some of the ones that are involved um, with these alliances and, you know, the judges, the attorneys. They're being threatened because I've had them tell me. So yeah. yeah, so we're talking really about not just the shadow government, but the sort of the substructure of corruption that's sort of ruling our society. Right, and who's going to stop it? Where's it going to stop? I mean, because they create uh, car accidents. I've had that happen to several friends. Mm -hmm. That happened to my one attorney, his wife. And so, you know, where's it going to stop? Well, so, I was hit three times in Tallahassee in one year. Yeah. And, you know, I've had cars come barreling at me and the person looks like, you know, that they're not, they're clueless as to what's going on. Like they're under mind control, that they are being guided to do that going full speed. Now, no one in their right mind would do that. You know, that happened to me in a parking lot. So you just really wonder what the heck is going on. Mm -hmm. So, but who's going to stop it? Yeah. You know what I found re very interesting, though, about the, these discoveries that you've made? They're sort of in the public domain. This yeah. information is actually out there. Anybody can get on the Internet. Absolutely. It's it's all public information. Well, I'm just going to go to Tallahassee, Florida. Now, Karen's never seen any of this. Um, I don't know how to do this. Well, I'm going to cover up your Social Security number, Karen. But okay. trust me, there's your... You can see just a little bit of your social. I don't know if you can, but these are the things that attach to your name. Wow. Using your social. And that's just two pages. It goes on for like 14 pages. And, so and I will say right now for everybody listening that my husband and I own our home in Maryland. And that's mm -hmm. it. There are no trust funds. There are no insurance policies. There are no co-owned properties with anybody other than our house that we own together, period. Mm -hmm. Much less 14 pages of property. Yeah, see I have pages and pages with Karen's uh, social security number attached to properties and businesses in Tallahassee, Florida, which should not be. 
No, I mean, shouldn't exist at all. I mean, I'm still going. It's outrageous. And I've done it myself. Mine is the same way. I'm still going. There's over 40, I would say over 20, 25 pages here now. And Midge, what is the name again um, under which you saw that? Um, well, I, it's her social. I put it, um, her social in. I, first I did her name. And then I thought, well, they have to be using her social. So then I did her name. And I can show this. I did her name in acronym form. Can you see that, Karen? Uh, no, because you've blanked out for some reason. Oh, I don't see it. How about that? Can you see it, Ramola? I can see it, yeah, right on top. Oh. Karen Stewart, uh, written in an acronym format, which yeah, means... and then all these... Don't, don't, don't. Okay, now I see it. And properties attached to your name. Well, you know what? If there was nothing, there, then it should be blank. Yeah. Right? Well, this no. also tells me why in last October, and I, I'm not supposed to be talking about this, but why when I was packing the car to leave Tallahassee because I had spent months begging the sheriff's department for help. And uh, when I got fed up and started to pack my car to leave, um, somebody was sent to attack me on my parents' property. Oh, so okay. they were not happy I was leaving before they had succeeded in killing me. Oh my gosh, Karen. Mm. Well, you know, uh, remember that AME church that I talked about? Well, yeah. this, your name acronym form is also registered doing business as a ME church. Mm -hmm. And so just for in a way with paying taxes, but that all ties it in together. Yeah, and just to spell it out for any viewers who are confused about acronym format, it basically is just the name with dots in between, right? K dot right. Dots, dots, dots or spaces. Dots or spaces. Or spaces. Right. It's the same thing. Well, let me let me add, just I'll interject this. The person who attacked me actually had family members who were working for the sheriff's department and had worked for the sheriff's department. Oh, okay. And the sheriff's department was uh, basically, I, I submitted to them a Florida Sunshine Act mm -hmm. to say, has NSA come to you and ask you to cooperate in any way, shape, or fashion from passively allowing things to happen to me or to actively participating and according to the Sunshine Act, which is like a FOIA, they mm -hmm. should have given me that information. But they said, um, well, for us to even look for that information, we'd like you to pay us $2,000. Oh, please. please so it's a, it's a Freedom of Information Act that can't be used because you can't possibly um, afford the exorbitant price of I mean, them that's looking. Out that's so, outrageous. That's it is. So here's another one, and I put in your initials with trust behind it, and more information comes up. I put in SMK in, uh, with spaces in between the initials and trust. And so, you know, I couldn't make this up. And so, you know, like I said, I validated it, putting in information that I know is true. And so that's how I, how I did that. And so we're talking page after page after page so and, yeah could you tell them that there's like a, you said already that there's a limit like if uh i'm a perp and i mm -hmm. get your name and social security number let's say i can only take out 13 yep. different combinations of trusts and insurance policies and other things like that and then that info gets passed on and somebody else does exactly the same right mm -hmm. right so you have to be creative you can only uh take property in your name only so many pieces of property so you just can't go get like a hundred pieces of property in your name there's a limit and so then that's they're getting creative so that's why you see different things in different ways so is so, that like basic real estate law or something that yeah you know it is here and because the only reason I know that is because my ex-husband and his business partner asked me at one point if they could put property in my name because they were at their limit and so, yeah, and then having been a realtor, uh, I knew that. I don't know what it is now because the laws change all the time. Uh -huh. But here's another one I put in just today with Karen in acronym form, and up comes 12K management. So then I went to the taxes to see who the taxpayer is, and no taxes due. And usually when I see something like that, it is government because nothing's being charged for taxes <laughs> you see you have to look at the taxes 
Oh, okay. And okay. that'll say the tax rate, and you have to look and see where the taxes are, where they're going. Uh huh. So it's a whole, you know, detective kind of work. Yeah. You know, but that's outrageous. And the only reason I put her name in like that is because I did that to myself here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And that's where I discovered that equipment, the RDO equipment attached to me with mm -hmm. a map that goes to my home. Mm -hmm. And then when I put in DOD, the same thing happens. Uh, and so I've been able to um, put in my name in various ways, just like I did Karen. And some of the same stuff comes up, basically. So that's why I did her name like that today. Hmm? Sorry. Can, can you fill me in on just, just a tad of what I missed? Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Oh, well, I put in Karen's name. I, I put in her social. And up came over, I would say. I had a huge... Uh, antic harp... Uh, and then I, I, you, know, you did. Uh, well, well, thunderstorm. Yeah, you said you put. I put it. This is. This is you came up with Karen's social security number. Uh, if her social security number is not being used, then it should not be nothing. But this is page after page after page, and I know it's right because I did the same search using my ex-husband's social security number, and his businesses came up. Mm -hmm. Okay, that I know that he owns. And then I did mine, and things came up. Mm -hmm. And so, it, and then I start connecting the dots between information here in Arizona with information that I see in Tallahassee. And mm -hmm. so then I put in different things like that RDO equipment, and same information comes up. So I know I'm doing the searches correctly, mm -hmm. but there should be nothing coming up. So this is actually sort of um, a massive case of not merely identity fraud, right? Mm -hmm. They've taken yeah. her name. But they're using it right. to to put properties in her name. Well, yeah, because then they can sell them and then they make money, you know. So what I've seen is that you know they'll have a what they call a straw person, um, who gets the property, and then uh, they convey it out usually to a corporation, a business, or someone who's connected to those corporations, and it's money laundering. I have a huge stack of money laundering with my ex-husband. Huge. So I knew what I was looking for. I've been doing this for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what they're doing. I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's, it falls under the RICO law, and nobody's doing anything. And what is really disturbing to me is the 9/11 victims. Um, and I, I, you know, I'd like help with you know going through that list. And then we have to go back to Wells Fargo and that debacle of what recently came out in the news, where. Um, they say their clients, they were creating new accounts in their clients' names. Well, um, I tend to think they were using our name. And I'd like to check that list if I could get a hold of it. Mm -hmm. And then you see they are getting loans. So if you're doing something like this, then you got to go get the loans from the banks, you see. And so, uh, and then that powers you up. Then you got all kinds of money coming in. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, and then you can go buy more businesses and you can buy part of the government and, mm -hmm. you know, so, it's not great. Yeah. My, one of the things that strikes me is, you know, whose names really they're using for this. Because it appears that we are all in some kind of targeted killing or targeted assassination program here. And so because we have that, you know, already on death row kind of label, on our foreheads here. Yeah, good, good point. We're, we're easy game, you know? Right, right. So it's asset stripping the population. Right. Yeah. But, you know, uh -huh. yeah, so the elitists are the only ones who are going to wind up with, you know, anything. But they'll eventually start killing each other off. <laughs> so, because they're a greedy bunch. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they establish a a culture of distrust, and that includes yeah. their circles, I think, too, that none of them trust each other because they all backstab by uh, um, default. But uh, I had a couple questions about sure. what you found, and maybe I just missed some of it. But mm -hmm. So my first question is, how are, why would um, Karen's name be in the Arizona list and, and not elsewhere? 
uh, oh. if, if that is the case, and I may just be missing. Oh, it is. Maybe it, it was is. in Florida. But if, but I'm curious, like where, if it's all over the place, or <clears throat> if it's in a particular state that is local that that person resides in, um, and also, um, you said that with the social security numbers, they're taking out potentially like loans and and buying houses under that name or, or whatnot. So, I would like to focus on that. How can you determine whether that is actually happening officially like or, or are they doing it in kind of a sort of dark web underground way so it's not traceable back to that person's mm -hmm. name through any usual uh, avenues of research yeah i mean i certainly they're doing something because you know um i don't know if karen has started you know drawing on her social security or whatever but um i am and uh, some of this stuff should be showing up. I should be getting more than what I'm getting, I think, because I have businesses under my name and that I have never owned, and that, to my knowledge. And so they are, because listen, if you own or a stockholder or part owner in a bank, you own the real estate company, the realtors, the title companies, who's gonna snitch? They're too afraid. And then, you know, you've kind of taken over the state as far as uh, the Arizona Corporation Commission, you know, um, the assessor's website. I mean, nobody's paying any attention, really. Nobody's minding the store. I did check on the assessor's website. They do have, um, um, they do have a company that comes in and they audit, you know, they do the auditing. But if, you, if that business is part of the system, of this new world order, then guess what? They're not going to say anything. So it's a huge corruption that's been put into place for years and years and years and years. Oh yeah, there's no doubt. But is Karen in, is Karen in Arizona? Is she in the Arizona? Yes, she is. She's here in Arizona. So that's my point. Right. Why would oh. Karen? There's a ton well, of stuff exactly. in Tallahassee, what about and there's other also charges? some in right. Arizona. I have found a trust account. It says K Stewart. NSA trust here and there. That's pretty clear. Pretty clear. And with, and with her social as well, right? With her social security. Well, that's just it. See, this system is a little bit different here. I can't pull up things under social. Okay. Um, but, yeah, but, uh, or I might not be doing it right. But see, uh, uh, every system's different. Every county's different. And so that's where Tallahassee, Florida has been very helpful because that's where it's easy to put in the social and things come up. Oh, okay. What I'm trying to understand, I'm not questioning that. What I'm trying to understand is, is Arizona a sort of TI hub? Like, where is this? How is this located? Is it decentralized and it's a web that all assessors sites have um, connection to in various states? That's what I'm trying to. Oh, sort of you mean like, are, are they in cahoots with each other, the assessors? Yeah, I'm just curious if these databases um, share or if there is some sort of strategy and why Arizona seems to be pulling up a lot of stuff. It, yeah, that's a good question. Well, no, it's just not here. It's all over. I mean, I've only because it takes an awful lot of work, I've only been able to do five states. And so, you know, and every system is different because you're yeah. talking every single county in right. the state. And so um, it's an incredible amount of work. And I do have people who I've taught who are helping me and so forth. Uh, so so much, uh, pretty much the information is pretty much the same. I don't know how many states Karen's name's actually being used or mine or right. our socials. But so far, I've been able to determine at least three. Wow. And that in itself is pretty outrageous. Yeah. yeah. So basically, it's against the law. <laughs> more than that. <laughs> more than that. Yeah, exactly. So, terrorism. Yeah. Right. And so you know, um, I mean, this this require it. There's somebody in government really needs to do a huge, huge report on this, and mm -hmm. you know, research um, because it's so massive. It's so corrupt. It's so everything evil. I don't even know if they have anybody who's equipped to do that type of research. You might have to teach them. You know, because if we would take this to the FBI, which is half corrupt anyway, mm -hmm. um, I don't know that they would have any kind of expert who would even know how to begin to approach this is the problem. 
I don't know, but I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> you know, I'm trying. So yeah. here, the title, NSA. Okay, so you put in the search. And it, I don't know if you can see it, but there it is. It, it, I don't know why it shows up down here. So I put in a search for NSA here in Arizona. And so then whatever attaches to it is what they what they own. And so I see all kinds of information with, you know, um, different um, properties and stuff and different names, Home Depot being one of them, just to let you know. And then it goes on down to where it says business personal property. And that's where you start seeing a lot of the equipment and leaf capital funding. That's a huge financial um, global system that I think is definitely attached to our targeting. That's where I found Bill Black's name and his company. I can show you that. Mm -hmm. So that's how all this works. And you have to be um, very diligent and it takes a lot of time. So, um, so, so there's a whole list there. I won't go through it because it is 15 pages. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So I have that. Then I go to, um, sorry, bear with me. I'm looking for the lease capital funding. Well, I pulled up property in his name because I know what I'm looking for. And here is his business that is registered. Everything has to be registered, you know, through the Corporation Commission, all businesses, everything. And so... Um, and maybe that's the key because everything has to be registered. That's why it's kind of showing up. It's leaving a trace. Right. So his, this is his business in Q. This is his registration and it has to be published. And so it was published in the Arizona Capital Times. They, all businesses, that's what they do when you create an LLC or whatever. And so these are, are the articles associated with his business. So I just kind of want to let you know that I do know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, very, so, very clear. Um, Absolutely. And you have so much information. And maybe this is the point at which maybe we, you kind of put out a national call to any agency oh. of integrity out there right. in our country. No, I'll probably have everybody after me, but this is NSA, Lead Capital Funding. This is huge, 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 huge. I'll just read a couple of names off of this. And um, so it's a little uh, disheartening when you see the Roman Catholic Church, the diocese on here. And it's one of the businesses of the NSA. And then uh, you have Open Tech Alliance. You have um, Beams Interactive. You have Six Degrees, LLC. You have Level 7 Technologies. Um, you have, uh, oh, there's Bill. Okay, this is what I saw. Karen, can you see that? There's Bill Black, all one name, and in queue. Mm -hmm. Leeds Capital Funding, LLC, Bill Black, LLC. It's right. His name is right here. Yep. Yep. So that's so these lists are very important. Um, there's a Pentecostal church. Um, here's my ex-husband's one of his group of attorneys, and who I met with. I met with one of them a couple of months ago and showed him a document that I had with my ex-husband's name on it. My his former uh, business partner that passed away, and along with this attorney's name because this attorney had sent a friend of mine at TI in Tucson had sent him a threatening letter through his HOA. And so uh, we paid him a little visit. <laughs> and so I showed him what I, uh, what I know and who he was working for. He's working for my ex-husband and he is targeting my friend. So that's why this, this, there's three different areas you go to. And that's why this is so important because this is a big business. A recap the three areas for anybody who might be, oh, let's say a attorney general who might be <laughs> yeah, viewing this. Yeah. Well, yeah. This oh. is, yeah, the assessor's website or in some states it is the taxpayer's website or tax collector. And, uh, and then it's the recorder's website where the contracts are. And then it is the corporation commission where the businesses are registered. Like my business, my LLC is registered there. And, um, you know, in anything, I mean, even if it's nefarious, they got to have it registered. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
anyhow, so that's three assess, places. Yeah, the assessor's website, the recorder's website, recorder's for the website for the contracts. So if you buy a home or whatever, that's where you go to find the contract and oh. uh, see whose names, whose signatures are there. Now, some places you have to buy the documents. In Maricopa County, I can view them for free. So uh, way different from Pima County and Tucson where I had to purchase everything. I spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars doing this. Oh, my word. Yeah. So over the years. Yes. Yeah. And so um, because I'm determined this has to come out, this is wrong. I mean, I got targeted because I told the truth about what had happened to me. Mm -hmm. And this should never have happened. Mm -hmm. No. No, not to anyone. And, you know, I have, a, I did a search. I put in daughters. And my daughter's name comes up under the, a trust account and my granddaughter. That is disturbing to me. Yes. And my daughter's name, it says, Property Masters of America. Mm -hmm. that's, well, that's, that's, that's a, yeah, that's a psychopath. I mean, nobody exist for a psychopath the, um, who isn't of use to them. And if they're not of use to them, they want nothing to do with them. And that's a very disturbing when that is a family member, like the father mm -hmm. of your children or something, or the stepfather of your children. Right. It, you, know. you know, they learn to pretend to be human and to appear to be human, mm -hmm. but they're not. Yeah, they're, these scumbags threaten my family uh, my children all the time too and Ramola's had some experience they have absolutely no boundaries they are yeah. the lowest of a low they're, they're, the dregs, they're the dregs of human behavior and yeah, they treat us like cattle we're numbers the social security numbers I think that yeah. alone you can tell this goes to us uh, like these objects uh, that are cattle that they're taking to the slaughterhouse which is what they're trying to make overt at this point right and, and they They've made of our country a country of criminals because they're putting these weapons in the hands of normal people and transforming them into assassins, telling them it's okay to hunt other people down. Yeah, it's a predator. I mean, we're basically in a country that's become predator and prey. It's astonishing. We don't, I've said this before, we're not producing widgets. We're preying on each other for money. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, and, and I simply they're, they're I, reveling in it, which is pathetic. You know, it's just so beyond disturbing. But like my neighbor here, his and uh, this whole hunter theme, the predator prey mm -hmm. thing. I have a neighbor who moved in two weeks after me, and his last name is Hunt, and he has a an SSID, and it's called Hunter. Oh, <laughs> I can give you all kinds of information about yeah. that name and Hunter. It's yeah. on these lists. Right, right. I'd like to see it. What needs to be shared because then you start seeing the connection. Course. About, you know, there's only, uh, I mean, there is a, obviously a big group that's connected to this satanic group that's trying to run the government, I do believe, mm -hmm. and they're doing all kinds of horrible things to us. And so you, start, you see the same names over and over again, and then you see their nicknames, or they take a, a letter from the alphabet to identify, you know, who they are. There's a lot of this stuff is coded. I've, oh. been, I've been able to break the code on some of it. Please share Bill's nickname for himself. Um, as much as I can determine, his name is Snuffer. <gasps> I have it right here. How appropriate, my goodness. To snuff people wow. out. That's oh. how little human beings mean to, mean to how him. How yeah. Oh. They revel in that kind of, of uh, type, sociopathic, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right here. Psychos. So right here it says William T. Snuffer Jr. Yes, and that okay. is Living Trust. And then there's a home in Paradise Valley. And I this is all public information. So I pulled that up and uh, pulled up the name. And it's a uh, the house. I have the address, and it's eight hundred and eleven thousand dollars. That's what the house is worth. It pays to kill people. Yeah. And so, you know, you'll be getting all that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Along with all this. Right here. 
<laughs> well, so I'll probably, they'll really try to kill me now, I'm sure. So, <laughs> Well, I, I told Mitch when she was first telling me about this, I said, mm -hmm. is there anybody I can contact to sell all of my property? <laughs> yeah, I'd like <laughs> So systematically, you know, we all need to decide how to go forward with all this. Mm -hmm. uh, it does well, need to come to the attention of the attorney generals mm -hmm. at the same time. It does. We need some honest attorney generals that we hope are not involved. So that if we can hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. yes. And Mitch, what I could do possibly to help is do a print interview with you and put some of this information, you know, the, the, the gist of it or the most important aspects down in print. So it's an article and we can link to it and send it out as much as possible. And I've told mm -hmm. Midge for whatever purposes she can use my name everything anything about my situation except the social security number social. <laughs> because there be might that. be three people out there who may not know it by this point <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't care. you're so funny but you know i want people to see when i put in a search for daughters i want them to see that my daughter's name is there along with my one granddaughter brianna mm -hmm. and that it says uh, pro owners of Owners of property, I think, or something like that. And property so enough. it's outrageous to me. Yeah, outrageous to me. No one has the right to have any trust accounts with my grandchildren, my um, no, daughter, and my son. Yeah. You know, it just makes me ill. Yeah. How dare them? Mm -hmm. So, but this is how things started really getting turned upside down, yeah. I do believe. Yeah. Um, what can you imagine if you have at your disposal 9-11 victims? Oh, that's the worst. That's yeah. the names of, and, 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 you know, obviously I only did five. And, of course, I don't have their socials, so I'm not saying that I put that in because I don't. I didn't do that because how could I? Mm -hmm. But I did put in five names. Imagine how much so, money I, was made and, that day. And I haven't, of course, and I haven't been able to pursue it because it just takes an awful lot of time. But someone somewhere needs to be looking at that. Mm -hmm. well, and, Jeff you know, Sessions and, needs and maybe to know about I'm this. wrong and maybe I'm wrong I but I did it. put in Myron May I put in his name his name comes up and that's very disturbing too yeah now, oh. just to recap just for a moment Myron May was in Tallahassee Florida when um, when I was actually and um, he was a a lawyer who was investigating uh, and trying to get a woman's child out and away from apparently Florida Child Protective Services because right. the child had been targeted by pedophiles to be taken away from the mother mm -hmm. and be put into the pedophile system that was running with the aid of Florida State uh, personnel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he was targeted for stalking and harassment to, to derail him and he was the one who ended up um, losing it and started shooting people in the Strozier Library, Law Library, and the police were all too happy to shoot him 24 times uh, mm -hmm. and kill him. And this is the sh same sheriff's department I went to and said, these people are stalking, harassing me. And I brought up the fact last summer, I said, look, I'm reporting to you exactly what Myron May reported to you. If there is a stalking organization in Tallahassee, Florida, that is a mercenary group that is hired to stalk and harass and push people over the edge or set them up so you can shoot them. Would you not want to know about that? And would you not want to know about a pedophilia ring that is engaging in uh, you know, basically child molestation and, uh, by using the, child, the Florida Child Protective Services? And the older deputy looked at me and said, no, we're not going to investigate that because a psychologist told us Myron May was crazy, so we don't have to look into this. Oh my. And and that was the summer of 2016. In the fall of 2016, guess what came out in the Tallahassee papers? They'd found a pedophile ring that was using child protective services. Yep, there you go. In Tallahassee. There you go. Yeah, that, Poor Myron, that absolutely. Definitely have a... Have, uh, but a lot of these stories that come on in this, I, I don't, I think are staged, May, because they have narrative. The deception in this country is so deep. Even the targeting narrative, the pedophilia 
all a lot of this stuff is staged for their benefit so they can control the mm -hmm. and uh, with Myron May Syrian type candidate I don't know he seemed to fit their narrative of discrediting target but he was so I'm not sure I know he was a brilliant man he was a decent man. Some of man. these targeted individuals they bring onto the scene at some well, point. And well, actually, well, I didn't know started, started, his targeting started, started, you know? started in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And uh, something as well happened there. Now, uh, I don't want to say it was my ex but we used to own a garbage company there. <laughs> Just to let you know. Oh. Not funny. And, you know, I don't agree with what, what he did, but at the same time, the poor man was being tortured and he was trying to get the word out. And no, I wouldn't, you know, use, I wouldn't do what he did, but um, nevertheless, you know, some people, um, they are at their wits end and they want people to hear their pleas. Yeah, Plus, they're being cooked those, alive. They're being they're cooked being alive cooked day alive. in, day out. You and know, not I mean, that, it's entirely possible he was influenced to do what he did. Yes, absolutely. Me too. Right. We just should pay attention. I think it's important to pay attention to the fakery out there because it's so thick, especially when stories come onto the to the the scene. You know, because there are a lot of fake. And I'm not saying this about Myra May at all, but there are a lot of fake TIs out there. A lot of fake narratives that they're going to use for their own purposes. I agree. Right, right. But in the case of Myron May, it's very interesting what Karen has uncovered, you know, and the fact that Myron May was actually possibly investigating an entire pedophilia ring. And um, wow. you know, that could be why he, that certainly sounds like why he was targeted. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, you're the truth teller. Yeah. You know, the truth tellers are the ones who are getting harmed. Yeah. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. across the board. That is that. Yeah. Exactly, to shut us up. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. so we've been going on for quite a while. And so <laughs> this, <laughs> but this has been. Amazing. Amazing. I think we, yeah. we should have her in to talk more about, about everything. Well, I'd like to just, you know, I'd like to she show you guys. Because it's incredible. <laughs> you know, because yeah. everyone needs to see. Now uh, it's broken down into a topic because I did surveillance on this one. Oh, wow. And who's involved and how it works with the corporations. I do government, then I do the corporations and see what, what they're, who they are and, what, and how it's all tied in and the equipment. Yeah. And so now that's what I'm doing by topic um, wow. because then it's really going to be connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. And I was telling Karen today that I listened to a, an interview that Dr. Marco did with, um, I can't think of his name, a doctor out of Colorado who is a target. Dr. And, Eric Hallstrom. Yes. And see, he mentioned the SRPs mm. that, you know, and I did my search and surveillance and, and role up with your, the surveillance role players. He said the same words that I have used. They are surveillance role players. And then when you put in DARPA, Mm -hmm. Well, then the same information comes up with the surveillance role players. And you put in perps, and I think I showed you guys that last time we got together, up, came, up comes SRPs. And That's then I found the perp fund. Stalkers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They are. Exactly. So um, anyhow, so I tied all that into Tallahassee, Florida today as well. So this mm -hmm. is Tallahassee, so it's all there. Are you doing separate podcasts then of your own where you were talking about these different... No. Aspects? no, I'm only doing it with you guys. I did an interview with Ella, and I've been asked to do um, an interview with somebody else. Okay, because uh, yeah. I was thinking we could get Dr. Eric Karlstrom on, and you know, oh, that would be great. Yeah, that we could do some corroboration for mm -hmm. him. Yeah, that'd be cool. You know, I need to meet with someone and show them something very serious that I know. And I just don't know where to go with it. And so um, I've uncovered something very serious and very horrible. And I need to talk to either Dr. Marco or this other guy or someone. Yes. Pri privately, but Skyping so I can show them what I Definitely. Have. I'm sure. We, we, we have, well, you are in touch already with Dr. Marco, right? Yeah. I am. I just, yeah. And so I, I just, help. yeah, that, that would be great. I would like to have several of you guys in on 
that discussion, if you would. Definitely. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't. I'm not comfortable with sitting on the information. I feel terrible that I haven't mm -hmm. passed it off. It needs to get out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want to keep that for another occasion? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, well, I'd like to have a private session with some of you guys so I can oh. show you. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, we'll do that next. Okay. Yeah. And it sounds like we can also plan to have you back on here, maybe with Dr. Eric Karlstrom, to talk a little bit more about what you're discovering with these database searches and so forth. Okay. That would um, be great. Yeah. So at this point, do you want to actually very briefly show us the database or shall we leave it for our next session? What do you think? As far as some of the information I have or what do you mean, Ramallah? Just the basic introduction to anybody who's watching, you know, because it sounds like a, pretty much anybody who's targeted could do this research for themselves on their own county assessor websites, correct? But yeah, absolutely. But, you know, that's just it. They just have to know how to do the searches, where to go, how to put it, because you put it in in different ways. You get, you know, totally two different information. I think when you put in the acronym way, I'm not, it, it doesn't always come up that way. That is the shadow government. Yeah. And so, I mean, I can't say that 100%, so I shouldn't say that. But you get two different types of information, putting the information in the searches differently. So, so um, and like I said, every county, every system is different. Arizona has happens to be very sophisticated. And as well as I think Tallahassee, Florida is one of the easier ones that I've taught myself to do. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I, you know, I'm really looking for a team. I've taught a few people. I think I've taught five people now. And then I then I teach myself their county mm -hmm. and with plans to teach them their own county. And um, so I've, I've taught a couple of them and, uh, and then they do nothing with it. And so that's been a little disappointing because it takes a lot of time and energy. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why I'm doing this. And so I need yeah. to have people pledge yeah. to me that they will devote so much time to getting the information out there and to connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. so, that's, so if anybody well, wanted to do that, that would be great. Hopefully some Here's proven the researchers would be good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ahmed, did you have Mid a is the basic strategy? In, do, you, do you have like a summary of the basic technique for searching? A summary? databases well I, I you know I just want to impress like upon people that you know I listen to interviews and I you know I hear some of the darkest things and I think oh it couldn't possibly be there the information could not and I put it in for kicks and giggles sometimes thinking oh my gosh it's not going to tell me show up anything and it does I mean you put in a search for Satanists and you kidding me corporations come up underneath that search or and child sacrifice you, or something horrible like that. Yeah, and so, and you should, know. Nothing should come up. There should be no associations in the database for that kind of yeah, they're having they're having fun. Like the psychopath is like, ha-ha, I'm doing this in your face, and you're too stupid to well, figure basically, it out. You know? I put a search in for slave, and information comes up. Hello. Yeah. You know, I put in, you know, I see things called Yes Communities associated with FEMA camps. Come on. You could, you know? you could probably do Cyborg and Clone and, you know, see well, I've done it. Program. I've done it. I have it. And I print it off as fast as I can to preserve the information because they are Microchip. Yeah. They, I've got it. There is, oh. an, there is an absolute alliance with the microchips. Some of the microchips, you know, they have a mark on them to the device owns them. Mm -hmm. So, do you think um, mid? Anyhow, do you think that they put in those when they create those kind of put in those keywords, sort of inside search, able to search and come come up with those keywords well, associated with, with the database? Um, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I, you know, because uh, I I was quick to, to print off information when I started researching it right off the bat so I know what's real what's not but I was telling Ramola that you know people get on these this website all the time because if you've got investors um, you've got business people corporation they're checking on it they're they're also you know inputting information 
all the time. So uh, it's being used by a lot of people on a daily basis. Okay. And so, um, I mean, anytime anybody buys a home, mm -hmm. you know, it becomes a, a new taxpayer, it all goes there. Mm -hmm. So these, uh, this website, all of them are being used all the time. Right. So um, the only thing that I've seen that they're doing is that, you know, I'll do a basic search. And then if there's like a, a number beside one of the corporations, it identifies that corporation. Well, you can click on that number. It'll give you more information. Now I can't get into those numbers, but that's okay because I have a different way to get into it. <laughs> so I just went around it, you know, but they are doing stuff. Yeah. So, but that's why we have to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking, Mitch, perhaps we can plan for the next podcast with you for you to actually take us through the database. Yeah, that would be good. Sure. You know, because we've talked about it and around it quite a bit this time. Mm -hmm. Sort of an introduction to the whole database. And next time we can go right into it. Right. And I just want to tell you guys that today when I was on it, yeah. um, all of a sudden a, a red sign popped up that said, be careful. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you, do you oh, think, yeah. do you think is, that was a message a, to all of us? It is a public <laughs> website. Anybody can get on it. And so I was sent a message today to be careful in red lettering. I can bet you anything. I've gotten that, that be message for a lot. All that is very, it's very much a targeting. Uh, I had right. a cop once it was tailing me and then I followed them in because I had seen that car around me more than once. And I was like, I've had it. I'm going to get the license plate. I come in, pulls up next to me. And then long story short, he ends up, getting to leave because I tried to call the cops on me. It was so bizarre. Comes, <laughs> leaves, tells the cop goodbye by his first name. Cop goes, yeah, because he thought we were came over because the guy called. It was a move. I want to do it. He can go, but I want to talk to you. And then he told me after he was talking to me for a while, he and he goes, you know, getting targeted so heavily at this point. He goes, you know. Oh. Be careful. This you're cutting so out. So many different yeah. times. You it's know, Amit, you're going to have to tell us this anecdote again. I've, I've had it some, so yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. what did I cut out? Yeah, yeah. we'll cut out. So you know what? We are not going to be stopped by this, and we are going to no. find a way to redo some parts of this video that we've lost, particularly with Ahmed, I think. And you know, this particular anecdote clearly it's of great importance. <laughs> you know, it's amazing that he can smile. Time. He can smile and laugh after going through that, right? What can you do? What can you do? Just yeah. Keep yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have uh, to hear that story again, but. Um, yep. The next time that we figure out the, you know, how to do this better, because of sure. course we're on Google Hangout. What is that CIA Hangout? So <laughs> this is what we get, I but, suppose. You know, when I went to the FBI, they said, you know, because they have to check you. I don't know if any of you have been there in person yourselves, but you have to. They like you to go in person. They wouldn't talk talk to me on the phone. So, um, you know, the first time I went, they said, "Well, you don't have anything on your record," and I said, "I know," and they go, "No, you don't have." anything you don't even have a parking ticket and I said I know so you tell me how this happened so then this last time they said you know uh, you're not under police surveillance because if you were we wouldn't be able to talk to you I said well I'm under some police surveillance and it's been going on for a long time and it's wrong and so that's when they said that my husband has his own surveillance going on I said well I want it to stop well, is your ex-husband doing the surveillance on the rest of us as well across the entire country? Well, probably. Yeah. Or a good portion. I mean, our little friend. Into it, I'm sure, but this is much bigger than well, that. Have, Does he have a friend in Pennsylvania? Probably. <laughs> I have pulled up. You know, I do have information on the seven states technology, and then our friend, Karen's friend of mine, she mapped it out. And it is an upside down triangle, but I have information that states the seven states technology, so they're able to do this across many states. Oh my goodness. 
It's global. Yeah. It's global. It is it's global. global. It's global. It's global. And as, it's a global and as you, mind control mm -hmm. program. Right. Exactly. And I can give you all that information. I have it all. Oh my goodness. And Midge, the thing is you actually un you've uncovered the undercover network that's making this possible because you're right, they have a structure. They, they have a distinct structure. And they're hiding it in plain sight. They're hiding it in these, you know, assessor county da uh, web uh, databases. Well, like it website. never would have occurred to me that any of that stuff would be there. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's astounding to me mm -hmm. that they would um, title things the way they have. But then again, they have to have an organized system, no matter yeah. what it is, yeah. and to identify. And, you know, what if, you know, heaven forbid that there is a catastrophe and stuff, people need to know what to do if the second in command is gone or the first in command is gone, you know, they need to know where to go to find the information. And so this yeah. is where it's at in detail. Yeah. So anyhow. Well, this has been an extraordinary show and, you know, absolutely revelatory. And we can't wait to talk to you again, Midge, and get more of your information and have us walk through that have have you walk us through the database Thanks. so we can see you know how to pull up these searches ourselves okay. and begin to understand a little bit more what exactly we're talking about with, you know you that you've uncovered it's easy it's easy <laughs> it's people are when I teach them they're they're shocked about how easy it is so Amazing. but it's something everyone has the right to know mm -hmm. these guys don't have the right to do this to us yeah. Not at all. And we have the right to find out everything we can about them. And to completely expose them. You know, that's where, they, cause that's where we are at this point in time. They had no right to touch any of our lives. No. And basically, they have pretty much established that we have every right to fully and completely expose them. Right. And that's what we must do at all costs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I say, thank God, I think now we have some people we can expose them to because, of, you know, a year or two ago, it wouldn't have mattered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but everybody was now. closed off. But now things are shaking up and waking up in the country. Right. So, you know, that brings me to the know. point where, you know, if you, even the, you know, the president, you can find out what they own on these websites. So uh, I did a search of our former president, and oh. he connects to some of these corporations. I can't make it up. I mean, oh. it's, it's there. I just put it in. You know, and so, uh, but it needs to come out, right? Yes, yes. And you know, by the way, Mitch, the stuff that you're revealing is just so explosive. I would think everybody in alt media should be kind of running to do an interview with you. Oh, well, I've been sitting on this information for a long time, so I'm just grateful uh, for the chance to, to tell it, you know. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Thank Thanks you. Thanks to yes. Karen. Thank you to Karen for asking me. And had she not asked me to do that search of, about her neighbor, I would have never discovered everything that I have. Yeah, so that was remarkable. There's several things that have happened with Karen and I that are quite remarkable, I think, Karen, um, including the little friend that she found to help me. Yeah, God's hand, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I'm so glad, you know, it's all come together and I'm so glad it's, well, Ahmed would say at this point, I'm surprised he hasn't said it already, that in some way we are all connected. We are. This, yeah. There's a matrix here <laughs> behind uh, us, but this is the good sure. part of the matrix. The good one, yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, right. I've been trying to find, yeah, I've been trying to find out what is it that some people have been implanted with the same frequency numbers and even saying that just creeps me out because it's not normal and so myself I share that with two other people which has never been hap which has never happened before for Dr. Staniger and her patients so uh, so I've been trying to find out what is the common denominator why the three of us why do we have that one frequency which by the way mm -hmm. was not registered is not registered they have oh, to be really? registered I thought they were all registered. I thought that's no. How this one them. has not registered the one, and so um, an investigation was opened by Dr. Staniger with the FCC, mm -hmm. and then she was told not to pursue it. Well, I have found who that traces to, and that traces to my ex-husband. 
and that's and why. And so, I, that is an outrage. And he can tell the FCC to tell her to cease a, an investigation. That's outrageous. Yeah, the outrageous. And so, you know, in my mind, you know, it's like everybody needs to sue all these major, you know, corporations and government and everything else. And yeah. then how outrageous that they tell her to stop an investigation that involves my ex-husband trying to kill me and shut me up. And that he could be the prime. And actually, I just was trying to. I was just trying to live my life, you know, and uh, trying to recoup recoup some of the financial losses that I've incurred. I mean, the divorce. He kept it going for three years, and that cost me over eighty thousand dollars. I mean, that's outrageous. And so, you know, he's tried to keep me penniless, and um, mm -hmm. and has done one thing after the other. Uh, and so somewhere along the way, someone's going to have to step up and say, enough, this is, this is wrong, mm -hmm. you know, and then took her all these medical um, problems along the way that have been created. Mm -hmm. And I hope the first step is simply uh, exposing it and talking about it, you know, and that this podcast goes far and wide. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, and reaches the people who can actually make a difference and change yes. the situation. Right. Uh, you know, because in a way, I've been my own worst enemy because I've been very quiet about it. Because, well, I guess if you have your face burned off quite a bit uh, several times that you are going to be a little quiet because they were, you know, trying to intimidate me. And right. then you, I finally had to make the decision that no matter what, I can't let them do that to me. And so finally, I am now speaking out. And then for a long time, I didn't want to bring harm on to my family or embarrass them. But now I feel like I know that I'm doing the right thing in order to protect them. To be quiet is to harm yourself more. And it took me a while to understand all that. Yeah, it's funny how it seems that this year everything is coming together in such a strong way. There are so many of us who have come to the point where we feel absolutely impelled to speak out completely and absolutely right. You know. And, you know, I'm not afraid to die. I've had a near-death experience before. And, uh, you know, I just know that I'm, I'm doing what's right. Mm -hmm. And we are not the ones who should be talking about death, you know, in a sense. Look at what's happened to us. Look at what's being done to us. Um, right. So. They've inverted the world and get people being persecuted and kept down and destroyed so they, they want the best people mm -hmm. and control them that's that's right freedom and that's exactly correct mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and so it's very important to stand up and speak out as you said Midge, and just to show that no we are not afraid we're not going to be intimidated right. uh, we can't be kept down we are going to Deal this. We're going to speak out about it. And we are going to inform the larger world because this ultimately is about reaching people of conscience, people of integrity, people of soul, and people of humanity around the world. You know, right. and laying the truth before them, laying the truth out before them, and asking for their um, participation in this. Because if we all don't pull together as humanity to save each other, then we're all going down. That's right. And people who are not targets, they need to listen up because um, they might find themselves being one as well. And, uh, you know, for no reason, none. And then they'll find that their children are also being experimented on or harmed or whatever. So, you know, I hope people who are listening to this will take heed and believe what we're saying and uh, step up and do what's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On which note, we should probably close this show and invite everybody to please tune in again very soon. Uh, we don't really have a date, but we'll be back very soon with this same crew uh, to talk a little bit more about what Mitch has discovered. Um, does anybody want to say anything? Anything as a last word? I just want to thank Mitch for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you your story and the heart that you bring to it. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I was going to say something similar. I mean, Midge is an extraordinary person. Um, she's endured 
beyond what I can believe and um, come out still a very strong woman, very uh, a woman of integrity and determination. And she keeps going. And uh, I think her name will go down in the history books. I really do. As well and as I do must. personally thank you. Thank you. Kim. For all of us. You too. Ditto. <laughs> yeah, I second that. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for coming forward. Oh, thank you guys. That's wonderful. Yeah. This is all new for me and it's it, it's wonderful. It really is. I took care and it's renewed everything. My energy, my focus, you know, my my heart, everything. So I just want to thank you all so much. Wonderful. Thank you, much. Our honor. Yeah. Our honor to have you. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to stop the broadcast now, but we can stay on the air for a few minutes if you want. Okay. To. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Good night.